finish up. So 19 through 31 in Romans chapter 3. Right. So Paul had just finished laying out that no one's righteous, and he quotes a bunch of Old Testament passages to prove his point that everyone is everyone is evil. And so then he's he's summarizing here at verse 19. Now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be stopped and the whole world may be held accountable to God. For by works of the law, no human being will be justified in his sight, since through the law comes knowledge of sin. But, another great word for the for the New Testament passages, because he just listed all of his bad stuff, but now yeah. the righteousness of God has been manifested apart from the law, although the law and the prophets bear witness to it, the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ is for all who believe. There is no distinction. That's a key phrase we'll touch on. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. They are justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a propitiation by his blood, to be received by faith. This was to show God's righteousness because it was his divine forbearance he had passed over former sins. It was to show his righteousness at the present time so that we might be just and just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. Mm -hmm. Then what becomes of our boasting? Is it is excluded. By what kind of law? By a law of works? No, but by the law of faith. For we hold that one is justified by faith apart from works of the law. Or is the God of the Jews only? Is he not God of the Gentiles also? Yes, the Gentiles also, since God is one God. Who will justify the circumcised by faith and the uncircumcised through faith? Do we then overthrow the law by this faith? By no means. On the contrary, we uphold the law. <clears throat> so there's, there's a lot in this passage, and I, I hope that I can do justice to to get this together here for you. Um, if we do go over a little bit, then oh well. <laughs> so first though, earlier this week, earlier this week, a Turkish, oh yeah, Islamic um, senator, yep. he collapsed seconds yeah. after saying Israel would suffer the wrath of Allah. I didn't hear that. And so yeah. we're going to watch this TikTok video of this clip and then we're going to reference these two passages because it ties into exactly what I was trying to point out in the beginning of this. And so God sometimes just provides me the examples. Oh, for, he, for he died died too, didn't he? Yeah, yes, he did. Yeah, yeah. The truth will not be silent. If you're only saved by the torment of history, you cannot be saved from the wrath of Allah. This is in talking about Israel. Listen to him. Had a heart attack right there on the spot. Wow. Isn't that something? Hey, you don't fool around with God. God, that said, was, God said, how dare you? Yeah. <laughs> so that was three days ago. He died one day ago in critical condition in the hospital. He never recovered. Wow. So Speaking if you could to turn to Acts chapter 5. Ananias. <laughs> That's the first one. Yeah. So far. Yeah. Oh, spooky. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It went quickly though, John. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was going to say, as, as much as it's terror to be struck down by God. Yeah. What would be worse is where is the guy now? I said, I don't know. Exactly. Oh. So, that's, on the one hand, the this is a brilliant example yeah. of, of something that we're going to talk about here momentarily after we read these reference passages just to kind of set the scene. But yeah. at the same time, there's no chance for forgiveness on that one. That was oh. just, well, what are you saying? Well, you probably not can gather where he probably went. <laughs> yes, right. <you> know, <laughs> which is sad. Oh. So, Acts chapter 5, verses 1 through 11. I'll just kind of read through this quickly. We're just kind of. Um, I, so you're familiar with this story, but there's, there's some key phrases here that I just want to point out kind of with, with this. So the man named Ananias and his wife Sapphira sold a piece of property with his wife's knowledge. He kept back for himself some of the proceeds and brought forth only part of that um, and laid at the apostles' feet. And Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and keep back for yourself part of the proceeds of the land? While it remained unsold, did it not remain your own? And after it was sold, was it not at your disposal? Why is it that you have contrived this deed in your heart, and you have lied, uh, not lied to man, but to God? And as heard these words, he fell down and breathed his last. Wow. 
Mm-hmm. And a great fear came upon those who heard it. The young men rose, wrapped him up, and carried him out, and buried him. After an interval of about three hours, so a few hours later, they're like, hey, this, his wife is probably curious about what happened to her husband. Let's yeah. <laughs> she came yeah. in. And not knowing what happened, right? So Peter said, okay, tell me, what did you do? And she had the exact same story. She lied, said, they said for this much. And Peter said to her, how is it that you have agreed together to test the Spirit of the Lord? Behold, the feet of those who buried your husband, the men just outside the door, <laughs> the door, they will carry you out. Just fall. Yeah. And she oh. fell down and breathed her last. Acts chapter 20, verse 23. This is a little more specific to uh, something that, that happened um, in that video that we just watched. Um, Acts chapter 20. Acts chapter 12, verse 20. <clears throat> the death of Herod. Now Herod was angry with the people of Tyre and Sidon, and they came to him in one accord after having persuaded Blastus, the king's chamberlain, they asked for peace because their country depended on the king's on the king's country for food. On the appointed day, Herod put on his royal robes, took a seat upon the throne, and delivered the oration to them. And the people were shouting, "The voice of a god and not of a man!" Immediately, the angel of the Lord struck him down because he did not give God the glory, and he was eaten by worms and breathed his last. Was that Herod Antipas, or yeah, the the? The main ruler, yeah, who killed all the babies, mm-hmm. yes, two years and up, mm-hmm. under, yeah, and um, spooky again, mm-hmm. yeah. So the the key point here is is what we're going to talk about just for a moment here from the from verse nineteen. The whole world will be held accountable to God. Yeah. So whether you believe in God or not, like this Turkish lawmaker who yeah. said that Israel would suffer the wrath of Allah. He's still accountable to God. Yeah, that sure says a lot. As yeah. are we all. Yeah. Oh, all right. So, hey, Tom. How's it going? Don't want to ask. No, it's all good. I would say we really just just did the introduction piece. Um, okay. There was the, the, the Turkish lawmaker who had a heart attack immediately after saying Israel was going to suffer oh, yeah, the rest of the law. Yeah. So just using that as a reference point, so everybody's going to be accountable to God and use the... Yeah. Story in Acts to help support that point. So, um, the phrase he says here, that every mouth may be stopped or closed. What what does that mean, I guess? What is is Paul trying to say when he finished up that? No no excuse. (laughs) Yeah, it doesn't provide any protection. There's no excuse. Mm -hmm. So the law of Moses was given to them, but it's not... For God to show judgment, not for Jews nor for Gentiles. Instead, the law just reveals how much we sin. It's just the the, the clarity chart, <laughs> basically. It forces us to agree, though, that we deserve God's wrath and anger. Because when we look at the law and look, realize how much we sin, then we have no choice but to accept that yeah, I, I deserve hell just as much as the next guy. Yeah, we're we're all we're on this like I don't even want to say we're all on the even playing field when it comes to sin and judgment. All right. We're all I mean, I was watching I just don't want to get you off track, but I was watching Jesus in Nazareth mm-hmm. up to the Christmas story in four. Mm-hmm. And um a lot of scripture and it really really convicted me. Like uh hey, it's, it's, it's just by the by the skin of our <laughs> just grace, pure grace. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and it, uh, like you were saying, no excuse, so no argument, right? So the reason that everyone's going to, every mouth is going to be closed at the throne of God is because at that point, no one's going to be able to argue with God over why they thought he should or should not have done one thing or another, over why he, they, he, they think that God should not have made one thing or another right, right or wrong. Um, because the law in the presence of God's holiness, will render them silent. Yeah. So when you're in the judgment seat, you're in the your your moment of perfection, physically and spiritually. So the knowledge of the law and the Bible always opened up to us, everybody. So even those who aren't Christians as they're standing before, they will have that same knowledge, that same ability to understand and read. And immediately then, all of their arguments that they think they thought they had 
here that would win, or that proved that God was wrong, will be instantly silenced. Yeah. Because they'll have, will stand at judgment seat and have no refute, have no argument, no judgment. I mean, we're, we're, it's almost like you look at it like we're guilty and we need a, a defender of Christ, an advocate to, to have a plea bargain. Yeah, we're all we got, guilty. Yeah, it's everybody here, we, like all of us. Oh, yeah. You know, that's it. Like the, there, there is nothing you'll do and or say at the throne, and Paul is trying to make this clear and and we'll touch on it again with the with the works. There's no amount of good we can do that will will render God's judgment on a curve and be like, well, okay, maybe you can come in. Mm -hmm. like this. You just got a plea bargain and you <clears throat> that Christ is our advocate, and that's it. Yeah. If you don't have him for a lawyer, and you don't plea bargain, you're done. That's it. That's that's it. You'll stand for God and you'll do nothing. Mm -hmm. So um, accountable to God, whether you like it or not. Um, this was, like I said, the example that we had in at Herod for the, for the Bible example in chapter 12, Acts, um, and Nias and Sapphira as well. The, whether you think God is real or not, you are still very accountable to him. <laughs> and, and that will be shown to you very quickly, either in this life or, or at the moment of your death, if God gives you the grace to live out a long natural life here, mm -hmm. uh, which he does to many people, mm -hmm. you know much to some of our disdain. <laughs> we have to see some people removed a little more quicker, but um, God's timing is perfect, and his grace is more than we can understand. So even when we have evil, wicked people who are living long lives in positions of power for long periods of time, that's a grace from God for them as well. So mm -hmm. more chances that they'll have to come back to him, and right. you know, that's all. That's a cross you need on the church right there. That's a cool looking cross. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah it is. It's just yeah. coming up in you. Yeah, I thought that was, uh, came across that randomly. I was looking actually for another image for this, and then I saw that one. I'm like, that'll work. The great about the race, though, Chuck Swindoll had a message one time where he says uh, something to the effect that we can never, ever understand uh, grace to preach it, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just. It, will, it'll, it'll, it's beyond my comprehension. I can talk about what the Bible says from it and what the Holy Spirit, you know, reveals as, as many of us could in, in the sense of uh, the context of us a little bit, but to really touch yeah. what the, the scope of God's grace and mercy is, mm -hmm. is, yes. I will never, I will never Especially when he, what he, he gives it to us and, and he knows everything we're thinking about, everything we're going to do, everything, you know, we've done, mm -hmm. where most of us don't know that. I don't know him, but you know, he knows me. He knows everything. Everything. And he still gives you grace. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. Well, you know, it, it, it was kind of brought up, I was watching um, Ankerberg the other day, and um, he brought up to it uh, something I thought was very, very interesting. I never really looked at it, but um, he talks about the rewards that um, it will declare uh, each one's work will become clear for the day will declare, the day of judgment will declare it and it'll be revealed by fire and the fire will test each one's work of what sort it is. So, you know, there's going to be like some work that, yep. you know, and totally out of the ball field mm -hmm. and totally forgot. But then he says that if anyone's work um, that he has built on endures, he will receive a reward. If anyone's work is burned, he will suffer loss, but he himself will be saved through the fire. And then he goes on and talks about the temple and stuff. But it's, it was kind of interesting that, um, <clears throat> I don't want to get too, get everyone far off, but it says, and then we will be given the praise each of God, mm -hmm. each each person will give be given the praise of God. Mm -hmm. Now, when you look at that, I was kind of interested. I've never heard it, and I looked at it. So it's not like we're going to go rewardless, right? Some people are just going to be really, they're going to be really down because the fact is everything that God kept throwing before them, do this, mm -hmm. do that, do this. They they re rejected it. Just yeah. no, I'm not doing that. Yeah, and there's, so <clears throat> the judgment of actions will come um, for those who are not believers, yeah. and that will base kind of part of how God will justly deal with them and their punishments and how, so we know that there is some degree of 
of severity as far as hell goes. However, that, right. that looks to be that was not safe. Only that God is completely just. Yeah. So we know that there's a completely just judgment for someone like Hitler versus your average yeah. Joe who just did not lived a good life but didn't believe in God. Uh, but for Christians, because all of our sinful judgments were paid <clears throat> with Christ's blood, all of our actions then are just done, are judged on is it for God or is it for us? Yeah. And yeah, it'll ultimately kind of give so we'll have some kind of reward, but it'll, it'll be something in kind of goes back to Christ because our good deeds for Christ are only possible because of Christ. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we, we end up giving thanks back to God that we even have these to offer because we were we couldn't do it anyway, mm -hmm. you know, without him. That's where um, <clears throat> Whitfield and uh, Wesley came up with the idea when they, they were arguing mm -hmm. a lot. And then they broke it at, towards the end of their lives. Okay. And started working together. Mm -hmm. But um, um, when Whitfield died, Wesley, or was it the other one? I don't even remember anymore. But the fact was one of them died and the other one said, you know what? Uh, Wesley was will be much closer to the throne of God and I'll be about back by the gate. Oh, he, that was good theology. It yeah. was good theology. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <clears throat> um. So, with our accountability, Paul says the whole world. So, every mouth is going to be stopped, and he just says the whole world is going to be accountable. So, whether you believe in God or not, whether you're a Christian for one day or, or a lifetime, everybody is accountable to God as part of his creation, um, Jews and Gentiles alike. And Paul will expand on this in Romans chapter 14. We'll touch on this when we get there. For it is written, as I live, says the Lord, every knee will bow to me. Every tongue will confess. So that each of us will give an account of himself to God. I am extremely grateful for Jesus because I don't want to have to do that. Yeah, right. I know what I've done. I know what I've thought. I'm aware of what sins are going to fall out of the mark against the law that God has. And I would hate to have to stand there and acknowledge each, acknowledge each and every one. Yeah. Everything. You're accountable for everything. Because God gave us the intellect to reason and understand. Animals are not accountable for anything because God purposely designed that they would not. They acknowledge creation speaks of it, right? We know this. I don't mean to, to diminish that in any, any aspect. Mm -hmm. But animals cannot reason who God is. <clears throat> they just... They live by the instincts God gave them. They'll listen to God, of course. I mean, we know that <laughs> they obey. They, they obey <laughs> because they follow for the ark for Noah. They, yeah. you know, there's there's certain aspects where we we've seen animals do kind of weird but but amazing things to help humans in various times at the very these random instances. I I believe there's some divine intervention with some of that. Jonah and the whale is another example. Oh yeah, John and Peter on um, the boat with Jesus when he said, "Take it out." And Peter goes, I, I just was out. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I was no, the fish is the fish. Yeah. I'd put them all right there for you. <laughs> that, after, that attribute that he's he's over all creation. He yeah, can, he can make even fish. Yeah, swim into a net. Yeah. So right. so we know that. The, but he, when he said that he can even make a jackass talk, but he can't make a jackass human shut his mouth. I was gonna yeah. say the donkey. Oh, absolutely, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> from Balaam in, uh, in Numbers. That's oh. one of my favorite Bible stories. <laughs> <laughs> oh. But uh, but we, as humans, we were given the intellectual reason. So um, I'll say this at this point just because it, it does come with, with what we're speaking about later. Uh, when you are talking to someone about the Bible, do not ever use because I said so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because just because you believe, that's fine. But what is the basis of, of how you came to your faith? And you can explain that to mm -hmm. your, your friend or whoever you're talking to, uh, but they need to intellectually reason on their own. Like we need, we, we talk about, the Bible talks about having faith as a child. There are certain aspects of, of God and the Bible we do have to just take on faith, of course. That is, mm -hmm. that is part of our, our piece. But there's a lot of logic and reason to understanding the truth of the Bible and why we believe it. Right. And so everybody needs to they have, have that same process. You can't just say, just do it because it's the truth. Right, but you can but, tell them, you can tell them that 
how the Lord has changed your life. Absolutely. You're part of the evidence of, of your experience of the intellectual reason you have. Yeah. And so you can share both. Absolutely. Yeah. But don't, but I guess what I'm saying is just, yeah. you know, let, let logic and reason of, of what you have in your own life help you convince them that they can logic and reason it as well. Right. And not just be like, oh, why do I believe it? Well, just because. Yeah. No, there's actual yeah. reasons. Yeah. But... Let them know how they have changed your life. Yes. And, you know, if you want to, you can see how it it could change yeah. your life as well. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So there, there's pieces of that. And then you could, you could depend on how that individual's thing, you could talk about the science aspect of it. You could talk about the historical aspects of it, mm -hmm. you know, but the, the logic and reason is there and will always be. And that's mm -hmm. something that God gave to us. That's mm -hmm. part of why we, why we have it. Um, so everything Paul listed in the verses prior and everything that Paul listed in the chapters prior. So if you're, if you're just, I guess if you're curious, what exactly is everything? The fact that no one seeks after God, the fact that all of our judgments are screwed, the <laughs> fact that everyone is guilty, that's all part of the package. But, my favorite word. <laughs> yeah, <it's laughs> you said that many times in the book. I did, yes. No, I, was, I, was, I just wanted the, the emphasis on what it means. So, yeah, therefore and but, they're my two favorite conjunctions, especially in the New Testament. They're great. Because they have this, the negative connotation with the positive application. Mm -hmm. There's a statue of liberty. And that, that's, yeah. That's, yeah, that's what that is. You need to go back to that. I, it is I would like to go there to see that in person. It is a statue of liberty. That's in Spain, right? No. No, Bob, uh, Brazil. Brazil, Rio, 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 Rio de Janeiro. I think Rio de Janeiro. I guess the nose fell off or something on it or something. Yeah, it's not, it's fell off on the it. giant statue of Jesus. Yep. Yeah, holding on the cross. Yeah, back when mankind cared more about architecture and cool religious things like that, that than is, they do. That is so cool. Yeah. I would like, I would like to see that visually. <clears throat> oh, that, I'm sorry. That text is very small. I thought I had that bigger. <laughs> <laughs> but now, the whole phrase, mm -hmm. Paul says in verse 21, but now so something crucial changed in human history so paul is laying out the, the whole idea of who we are and what we are and that jew or gentile like there was no no difference and then he he comes up and says like, yeah because no one's seeking after god the knowledge of the law just brings your knowledge of sin what do we do yeah. well but now so something changed and that was um oh why did I not have my text? Anyway, I guess we're going to talk about it without my text. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, what, what are you gonna... <laughs> so, I, didn't put, I should have proofread this before. I did not. I put it together and I'm like, it's good. So I decided. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, Jesus, right? So the event of Jesus Christ on the cross is the, mm -hmm. the, the thing that changed. So the law, the knowledge of the Old Testament and the practice of that stuff was setting up for what Jesus would do on the cross. And so Paul's like, but now. Mm -hmm. So the law doesn't matter for your salvation. And he, he's going to later point out the law didn't matter for your salvation before it was faith through the laws, the actions of the law going towards what Christ would do. Mm -hmm. But I know he's saying now Jesus has come. So that's it. <clears throat> and um, this change, though, was witnessed by the law and the prophets. And what what is he... Talking about that. Let me make sure I got my stuff. Okay, I do. <laughs> I can't read that. Um, no, so it's so Paul says that this this righteousness of God is what changed, right? Jesus Christ coming in. That's but now the righteousness of God came. But he says that it was apart from the law, although the law and the prophets spoke of it. So what <clears throat> the question here is is what does it mean that it's being witnessed by the um uh, Say, I know the last couple of times I've seen it. I'm not tall enough to get it, though. So. Yeah, me neither. Oh. <laughs> we can stab. Did you take some of those hallucinatory mushrooms? I, 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 <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. It, it's interesting. You, Galatians talks about <laughs> the, the law and the gospel. Yeah, for YouTube. <laughs> and and the, the hard structure of trying to walk in the law. Yeah. And um, the fact is, he makes it perfectly clear what the law is for us. Yep. Now, it's, it's, it's the guidance mm. to keep us on the, the short and narrow. Yep. I mean, if we have a problem, we can go back to the law 
look at it and say, well, that God, God said, don't do that. Yep. So if I see something in the law that I don't agree with, <clears throat> because I just, my, my sinful self, think that right. that should just not be. And I think every Christian, if they're honest with themselves, could at one point attest to uh, saying that there's definitely some things that they don't agree with. Even maybe even still a lot of their sinful flesh as a Christian is like, I really wish that God did not make that a, a law, mm-hmm. law or a, a sin. <clears throat> but we acknowledge that it is. Because God, because God says it is, but our fight on it should bring us back to Romans three and understand that no one seeks after God. So if I'm looking at a piece of the law that I don't agree with, then I can reference Romans chapter three and be like, well, no one's seeking after God. So God said it here. I disagree with it. But if no one's seeking after God, then I'm probably wrong. <laughs> so. <clears throat> but it was always God's plan to arrive at this but now moment. So I mentioned before, uh, I think a few people have, the Old Testament saints were saved on the faith of what Jesus was going to do. So their faith was forward to the cross coming. But now our faith is from the cross back and the hope of what is coming for the, sec- the second coming. <clears throat> uh, the law was given to the Jews to be an example of, of what Jesus was going to do for them permanently, and to also help them be the light of the world in the Old Testament, because God's mission field was always the world from the beginning. Uh, the Jews kind of, as we talked about, construed that. So can a sinful person get God's righteousness? Sure. Yes. If we're all sinful people, we all get God's oh, righteousness yeah. through Jesus. Sure we are. <laughs> <laughs> um, but how? These are just some work hard fun at questions. It. Work hard at it. Yeah. <laughs> well, Get out. <laughs> yeah. That's Brian very Catholic Brian of you. <laughs> and faith. That's and grace. Faith, yeah. Faith, yeah. So, yeah, faith. So, if someone has faith in God but still sins, then did they get God righteousness? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Everyone still sins. Everyone still mm-hmm. struggles You're with sin. Right. Um. So we learned before that God will not show partiality when he's judging. So how about when he's saving? Same thing. Same thing. That's yeah. right. Still no partiality because God is looking to give his grace and mercy as much and as often as he can. Yeah. And that's something a lot of people who are, are atheist or against Christianity, they don't care for, they don't like, in the sense, just because they don't like anything else about God, they just rope that in there, but when you get talking to some people, and if they're, if their hearts are heavy towards God could not because I am, Mm -hmm. remember that, I mean, we all get grace and mercy in in abundance, but the whole, one of, part of God's holy attributes there are who he is, like there's, and he's, Loving to give it out as much as he can. I mean, how much grace and mercy do we see in the world today just by the fact that everybody woke up this morning? Well, everybody who did wake up this morning and woke up yeah. this morning. <laughs> there are a few people that didn't uh, you know, across the world, yeah. yeah. But that's a grace and a mercy right there. Yeah. You know, And we just talked about how a lot of people, I mean, God doesn't strike everybody dead right as soon as they say something blasphemous. <laughs> Just when they're on live TV. Just, <laughs> you know, so, I mean, I don't know how many other people have uttered in their conversations or in, in their own whatever, because we have the, yeah. the, um, uh, the protests for Hamas all across the West mm-hmm. here. And, you know, God's not striking any of them dead that we know of, that we didn't hear any stories where they suddenly yeah. keeled over after shouting a curse at Israel, you know. So there's a mercy and a grace right there. Well, that, that gal that's the, the Harvard president, did you hear about her? No, I did not. She's black, incidentally, evidently. And she uh, cheated up, she, they found out that she plagiarized her doctoral thesis verbatim to what? somebody, and, and they're letting her, give her a pass on it. What? Yes. Yeah. Look it up. Wow. I will have to say that. Yeah. She gets a pass. Why? Yeah, well, black, this, black lives matter. I, I guess. Not, not, wow. Not when they cheat. 
Mountain Ash. <laughs> but I mean, all the rest of the Harvard students, I mean, they yeah. can't, they they get thrown out of the university. They get thrown out of the university if yeah. they get caught right. doing that, right. doing their things. And then um, the other day, somebody in Oregon was was taking a test, and she's the, the question was, can men have babies? And she said, no. And she flunked the test because she said, no, they can't because wow. she specifically men can have babies. Mm -hmm. Wow. So the, the person says, well, now she can get in Harvard now because she's qualified. To get oh, yeah. 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 There you go. Yeah. I mean, she has to change idiotic. schools. <laughs> can we get more idiotic? I mean, yeah. it's really, it's really sad because those, those key colleges, Princeton, Harvard, right. um, mm -hmm. they were founded yep. by Christian people. Yep. Way well, back in the day. There's just no morals anymore. And it's just... No. It is, it is yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Very much so. <clears throat> so, uh, this one's a, kind of a self-reflection here. Will, uh, have you ever shared the gospel with someone and had them ask you a question like, would God save a murderer for believing while a good person is judged? And how would you answer them? Mm -hmm. um, Every, oh, every sentence the same. I had that uh, conversation with a friend of mine. He don't. He's retired now. Yeah. But we got talking about God, and he says, "So you're telling me if Jer uh, Jeffrey Dahmer repented, he'd be forgiven?" I says, "Yes, because God, in God's eyes, a sin is a sin. Mm -hmm. So uh, if, as long as you repent for that, yes, you'll be going to heaven." Yeah. Well, will God save a murderer for believing? Yeah, if he has faith. Right. Mm -hmm. And no, a good person, no it, one's good. It's, and this you know is where I mean? we can't understand the grace. Oh. And especially those who don't have the Holy Spirit at all are not Christians will even not, or mm -hmm. more so, not understand the grace. Why we can't understand grace, though, is just like we were talking, still no partiality. Can anyone show <laughs> no partiality? Right. Like, oh. as humans, you can't. I feel right. like you can't judge perfectly or sh not show partiality perfectly mm -hmm. because we're not. We're God. Right. You know what I mean? We don't. Yeah. We have We're emotions and we have the wrong intentions. Absolutely. He doesn't. So mm -hmm. when it's, I think it's amazing as, as a Christian, you know, we maybe understand this a little differently because the Holy Spirit and the Bible or whatever. But uh, when I see or hear about people in prison who get saved, you know, after doing a life of whatever vicious thing they were doing, it's like, that's amazing. Yeah. It's like, that's, that's the awesome forgiving power of my God. If that was a true repentant moment for that individual, awesome. You know, that's just as amazing as someone who was living a civically moral life, just just living, and then they, you say, there's just as much rejoicing in heaven as either one. Well, and look at what Paul I mean, did. I mean, I know, right? Paul would have been <laughs> the yeah. people, yeah, I mean, for what he was doing, obviously, yeah. killing Christians, it's just, God used those people in the Bible for, yeah. for a purpose. Absolutely. To see how fallen they were and how, how much they could... Yeah. Do the 180 and, and serve God. Yeah, and it just it just shows the continuing theme of the Bible that the hero is never us; it's always God. Well, we're not the judge either. No, you can't it's... judge people because everyone, if sin is sin, no matter what, mm -hmm. you you can't have that thought about those people. I mean, good for them right. if they're going to accept Christ and yeah. hopefully be in no. heaven someday. Yeah, um, it's kind of a test of our own our own pride and self righteousness when we start to get. Um, judgmental towards someone else that we think is Beyonce or someone that we think can't or we get judgmental towards God for allowing this person to just say I'm sorry God please forgive me and get, get away with mm -hmm. it quote unquote <laughs> like, the, like that thing with if you're talking about Dom I, you know, I heard that I mean the guy's never going to die I mean, it's all going to be like Hitler it's all going to be an example yep. around here in Wisconsin yeah but but you know those, those people that are doing that, they just feel like they're not going to make it in heaven. How can this guy get in heaven? Look at all the good things I've done compared to Dom. I'm not. I don't feel like I'm going to heaven. How right. Can he go to heaven? Yeah. And they're just worried. And it's it's yeah. It comes right back to that inner inner pride of. I'm better than Dom. Uh, I should at least go to heaven. Should yeah. Go to heaven. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And if he's getting in heaven, how am I going to get there? <laughs> yes. Yeah. There is no distinction. It's faith, but it's all. Oh, God breaks everyone down too. <laughs> ashes yeah. to ashes, we all fall. Okay. Short. <laughs> oh. okay. I think it all comes to <clears throat> sincere repentance. It does. Yes. Yeah, I forgot. Let's look at Gary. Move it. Wait. Yeah, that's uh, Tom and Gary. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> um. So <clears throat> after the law kind of comes, Paul's you know explaining this righteousness came through. 
The law and the prophets bore witness to it, explaining that Jesus was going to come. So this but now moment was the entire purpose of the Old Testament. And Jesus Christ is for all who believe there is no distinction. So Paul is making a very clear statement that Jews, sorry, you're not it. Like, or only. <laughs> Everybody gets a chance at grace because of Jesus now. Because there is no distinction. We all fall short to the glory of God. So yeah. just, of course, to play on words from the nursery rhyme, we all fall down. Ashes to ashes, we all fall short. Uh, so <clears throat> how far short do we fall of God's standard? <laughs> Long ways. As far as you can go. <laughs> That's as far as you've fallen. That's That's so far beyond what we could fix. If we had... Um, if we could have the desire and want to fix it. If you think of, and I've seen this before, there's a chasm between God and us, and sin is the open void in between. The problem that uh, told depravity does to us, and we talked about before, that Paul made clear in the other chapters, is that we don't even want to try to jump that cavern to get to God. We don't even care. You're dead. But if we, for some, if we somehow in our sin could decide we want to get close to God. Yeah. The chasm is so vast, it's infinite. you could not even contemplate how to get to God. That's how far our sin has separated us. It's infinite. Right? It's infinite. Right? infinite. It's, 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 yes. You've insulted an infinite God. It's yeah. an infinite There's chasm. A, yep. And the only way we get across now is yeah. the cross of Jesus. The bridge. The bridge that crosses that cavern. I've seen some imagery that kind of gives that, that example. And the only way you can use the cross of Jesus to get across that chasm is through the calling of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. So if we fall short of the standard, though, what hope do we have? Jesus. Jesus Christ. Because we're all justified. Um, made, a way, yep, made a way to remove the gap of sin between us. And Paul says in the next verse, you're justified by his grace as a gift gift it means we don't do anything for it our sin is fully removed by putting our faith in jesus christ we're going to talk about this in just right there yep what does propitiation mean <laughs> i think i talked about it in the book too but um 25 whom god put forward as a propitiation for our sins so jesus is a propitiation that is um so it comes from the Greek word, this part, I don't think I put it in the, the book, which means sacrifice of atonement. Mm -hmm. So it is something in lieu of. Uh, Hebrews 9.5, we use the exact same word above it, where the cherubim of glory, overshadowing the mercy seat. That's where that word, propitiation, yeah. is used in the Greek, in the Hebrews. Uh, of these, we cannot speak now in detail. So the mercy seat, the Ark of the Covenant, and the mercy seat, the we're talking about here the sacrifice the same word the sacrifice of atonement place the same one that they used for what jesus did on the cross you got it this is right where the huge confusion comes between protestant catholics and other religions is they go well we're we're not good enough to earn our way so we're going to keep doing that so hopefully we'll make it mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> but see <laughs> but they, they don't understand propitiation as right. an act that was done Yes. At one time. Because we won't. Right? No. And the only way we can is well, he's what, still in the picture. Obviously. Doesn't the text say all have sinned and fallen short of the glory? Yeah. So when as a Catholic, when do you why do you think you could get that to change by your works? You can I mean, yeah, through through the you know works what I mean? think that somehow there's um there's an actual <laughs> threshold if I get above it. More righteous individually by yeah. doing or ex exercising mm -hmm. certain things. When you go through Mary, of course. Oh, yes, and then first. Oh, yeah. oh, boy. The other day I heard a thing where John Pastor Kim was preaching. He said that he all said Mary was all sin. Yeah. You know, but but there's, a, there's, a, there's a thing, many things in the Bible, but there's one thing in there when, when she was outside this house and Jesus was in there. Remember, and she said, you know, she said, you know, come out, you know, like they thought Jesus was nuts. And then she was with his brothers. Yeah. She thought he was nuts and she wanted to call him out. So right there is a sin right there. Yeah. That's so true. And right in the Bible is a sin by yep. Mary. So I if she's sinless from birth, 
yeah. there's something wrong with the Bible or there's something wrong with that statement. Right. And I and I fully agree. I think that there's there's contradicting evidence to to how they try to prove that Mary was was sinless. Yes, there's a there's um, a thing right there where she was sinning because she was saying that Jesus was cuckoo. Yeah, along with his brothers. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that's right because that's when he's like, I can't be a uh, prophet. My, can't my be in his my, own house or whatever. Or my his mother own and my brothers city. are those who are with me at this point. Yeah. Like, she was calling him a nut. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and we know just from <laughs> Acts that his brothers. They they did not. I can't imagine growing up with Jesus like as the older brother, but yeah. thinking that yeah. that he was God. Like I I I feel for Jude and James and the others mm -hmm. because I probably would have been in their shoes at these. But after his resurrection, they were like, "We get it." Yeah. yeah. And, and, yeah. and from the point two of the nativity story, she gave birth to Jesus, saw all this stuff happen, and still she. And then thirty years later, she still sins. And I think, and that just. Shows her humanity, right? Right. I think, She's a sinner. I think, yeah. As as a as a mother, I mean, I think you, you kind of get because well, because Jesus, apart from that one moment at around twelve when, when he was in the temple when they mm -hmm. lost him for a few days, yeah. um, we don't see much of Jesus' childhood, so we don't know yeah. the kind of conversations or things he had. All we do know is that he waited until about thirty yeah. before he actually began his, his ministry, and I don't know if in Mary's mind, time deludes. You know, so mm -hmm. over time, the meaning of, of the birth and stuff maybe would it yeah, wash down she, a little bit was, in their own life. She was, she was with them for 30 some years, and they only had three years with them. Yeah, she had 30 years. Yeah, he came out of her womb. I know, <laughs> she saw the star, she saw the wise men. That yeah, had all the stuff happening. Yeah, heard the prophecies, did all that stuff. Yeah. She did the Magnificat. I mean, Joseph did the <laughs> Benedictus. And, she still didn't get it. Yep. And I think that just goes to show that we often forget. Well, it was, Jesus made yes, a humans, really huge forget. distinction to her, <clears throat> which a lot of people miss mm -hmm. a lot of times. And I missed it for many years until I really looked it up and, re and researched it. And there's theologians that try to dismiss this way. You know, know what it was? Yeah. At the wedding, the Cana, oh, yeah. he says, woman, my time has yeah, not yeah, come. Yeah. And you know what? That is a distinction that's a hundred miles long. Mm -hmm. That I'm not your son. Yep. Yeah. Once this starts. Yep. I, I'm, I'll always be your physical. Yeah. But I'm not your son. There's, there's always been heresies whether that Jesus was, you know, totally di a more divine than more human, or mm -hmm. more human than more divine. But there's never been a heresy that said that he was all human. Yep. That's the one heresy that's never been around that he's all human. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they try, like, Islam tries to say that. Yeah. But that's, well, not, with, but that's not within the church. Oh, yeah. No, the, yeah, the church has never... They're, yeah. a bunch of, they're a bunch of pagan uh, yeah. infidels. Yeah. I don't care what they oh, say. Oh, yeah. Okay, I know what you're saying now. They, they, yep. To me, they're, they're, they don't know anything anyway. Yeah. I mean, yeah, when yeah when I know that. But <laughs> a heresy is when it occurs in the church. Yes. Because heresy means to divide. That's what her yep. heresy means, to divide. Yeah. You know, and that's true, yeah, because they yeah, we've always they, understood that Jesus is a hundred percent God in that. They're dumb, <clears throat> dumb, dumb, I mean blind. Yeah. But the propitiation, so for what well. Jesus is as a hundred percent God in man, <laughs> he satisfied the demand for justice. All sin in God's well. eyes had to have justice. And so either you pay for it with yeah. eternity in hell as justice to God for the sin that you have, yeah. or Jesus pays for it to satisfy the justice against you. Right. We talked about the cups of wrath before. It's it's all part of the same picture. Um, <clears throat> I heard this analogy once, and I kind of liked it. Um, we are both sinners and sinful. So we are we are <laughs> born and we are sinful people who then commit sin. It's like the spider and the spider web. The spider is a sinful thing. The spider web is the sinful acts that we would do in, in the picture. If we just keep the, the the laws of the Old Testament, they just kept wiping out the spider webs, but never killing the spider. So the you spider did. webs keep come, coming back. You you did just a little while ago. So what I did, yeah. <laughs> so Good job. so it was just this temporary thing to wash out the sins, but it never replaced 
They never got rid of the spider, never got rid of the sinful thing that we are that keeps making more spider webs through sinful actions. Well, that's Jesus true. came through and now he took our place, so now the spider, the sinful piece is out, the sinful actions are gone mm -hmm. in God's eyes through the righteousness of what Jesus. Now we're still in the sinful flesh, so well, we're still doing the sinful the high things. Priest in but to the justice of God, it's all cleaned up. The high priest in, in Hebrews took gives it perfectly. Priests couldn't do it. Would need to be done. Yeah. Or, or or they wouldn't need to be making their sacrifices right. every right. year. Mm -hmm. And then when Jesus came once and for all mm -hmm. and made the the once ultimate sacrifice, he, he sat down. Yeah. He's done. He's rested. He yep. rested from it. Oh, that That's <laughs> oh. So we're just going to run through this pretty quick. I only got a couple questions here at the end, just kind of wrapping up. This. So what does it mean that God passed over sins previously committed? It's up here in the uh, Paul, sh Paul shows that this includes the sins of the past before that Christ died on the cross. Um, it's also, it's not that God failed to punish the old sins. Is that he stored up his punishment and poured out on Jesus to fully satisfy the payment of former sins. So God knew when Christ was coming and had that date marked, that but now moment of history. Mm -hmm. And so for the entirety of the Old Testament and the world up to the point of the cross, God was just patient. We do have wrath of God moments on individuals, on groups of people. Mm -hmm. We still see that today in, in some aspects. That, but as a whole... After the flood, God said, all right, we're holding off. I will be patient in my wrath against the sin of all mankind because the Savior is coming, and it will be at that date. And when Jesus died then, it covered, it took the wrath of God for all the sins that humanity committed up to that point, which is hard to think about, as well as all the sins of humanity past that point, which is also hard to think about. <laughs> Um, because I think in our heads it's easy for something to say, okay, this at this point it starts going forward because it's a, it's just in a timeline mm -hmm. mindset that we have fixed. It's hard to think that God would have held everything up and then been like, okay, here's everything from what's going forward. Oh, and then here's everything that already happened. That as well, it's all the justice, the wrath of God that was poured out on Jesus. So why is grace free then? I mean, if Jesus <laughs> did all this. <coughs> Love. Grace is free because of God's love. His most dominant, I say most dominant, he's equal in all attributes, but the one that, that encompasses all his other attributes is love. Mm -hmm. God decided through his love of, of us, the creation, even while we were yet sinners, that he would have Christ die for us and make it so that all we had to do was just have faith in that and understand our own sinful self and that's it. That's amazing. You want to make it so simple for us so that we didn't have to struggle, we didn't have yeah. to yeah. process and reason. Now our own intellectual, like we have the additional sources, so the longer, I mean, as you're growing in Christ, you, you grow in, in knowledge mm -hmm. more. But there's, it's just, just love. Mm -hmm. God could have said, it's there and available, but you also have to do this. But he didn't. So that's why Paul says we have no room to boast, because there's nothing we did. we've done. Um, so God did all the work, so we can't boast. Instead of boasting, though, then what attitude should we have? Gratitude. Gratitude. Yeah. <laughs> why did Paul ask if God is only for the Jews or for the Gentiles? This was, we saw, he's not just the God of the Jews, but yes, he's the God of the Gentiles also. So... We've talked about, and this is going to be a heavy theme, because Paul addressed this multiple times. The Jews still relied heavily on the actions of the law and the fact that they were the chosen people to justify themselves. They were using that action to say that they're just saved by default. Paul refutes this many different ways, many times. I mean, already between chapters 1 and 3, I think in every chapter, he refuted the idea that the Jews were solely chosen based on their, on their, their heritage. Uh, and he says that faith is available to all because the same God that saved the Jews is the same God that died for the Gentiles. Yeah. 
There's one God for all people, all nations. And even though God may have said, I'm choosing to make a Jewish nation <clears throat> to have my law, to be their, their, their revelation for that, to offer the, the, the place where the salvation of all would come, it was always the intention that the Jews would be a witness to the rest of the world because of who God is and what he is to them. Because it's the same God. Like, it's not that the God of the Israel is just for them. He's for everyone. So, that wraps up right on time. <laughs> <laughs>